Hello everyone and welcome to another high elo game of Age of Empires. Today fall truly is upon us as the wind outside is rattling the windows, but we're safe inside sitting down comfortably to watch Nikov playing as the Bengalis in red get ready to take on an MBL playing as the Franks in blue. Now while the players heard their herdables explore their immediate surroundings with all manner of livestock and scout and try to go up to feudal age as fast as possible, let's take a look at the Civ matchup. We'll be watching today the Bengalis and Elephant Civilization through and through. All of their Elephant units take less bonus damage, are more resistant to conversion, and can be upgraded to attack 20% faster. In addition to that, all Bengali melee cavalry do come with a small attack bonus against skirmishers, which does help them defend in Feudal Age if you've got the food to spend. Ooh, <laughs> that villager at half health. Very, very risky without Loom. Now, in order to support these slow, easily converted units on the battlefield, all Bengali monks come with a massive plus three, plus three armor boost, and their unique unit, the Ratha, is one of the most versatile but also hated units in the game, being a chariot unit that can switch between ranged and melee modes. Now, in order to support the Bengali army, every one of their town centers spawns two villagers for free whenever they reach the next age, so I'm hoping to remember to keep an eye out on the red town center once Nikov hits feudal. We'll see where he allocates those two extra villagers, and their entire villager and monk population can be put on a very strict diet so that it takes up 10% less population space. The way that works is each one of these villagers, each monk, takes up 0.9 population instead of the usual one, which means you can use that extra space for more villagers, more military, whatever the heck you'd like to do. Now, across to the east, we've got the Franks played by MBL. This is the OG cavalry civilization hearkening back all the way to the 20th century, which right now seems like a very, very distant memory and a very, very long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Now, Frankish knights come with extra line of sight. Their stables can be upgraded to work much, much faster, and all of their mounted units start getting more HP, 20% more, starting in Feudal Age. But to support their heavy cavalry on the field of battle against pesky, annoying things like halberdiers, maybe even camel riders, the Franks can turn to their unique unit, the Throwing Axemen. This is a ranged infantry unit similar to the Malian Gibetto, whose range can be actually upgraded to get a nice plus one boost. And to help a player produce as many throwing axemen as possible, Frankish castles do cost less stone, although recently that stone discount has been changed, no longer a flat 25% tax, or I should say a rebate. It is now a 15% discount in castle, 25% in imperial. At the feed a big militaristic Frankish population, their foragers do work 15% faster, and they get all mill upgrades for free. Let's see if he can pull the... Uh, no, no one ever pulls the elephant or the rhino without taking damage. I, I mean, I shouldn't say no one. Well, very few people <laughs> manage to pull these massive behemoths without taking any kind of damage. Let's take a look at the bases, see where the players are situated, how they spawned. Looks like MBL's got three itty-bitty teeny-weeny forests in the forward position. The north, the west, completely exposed, but... Primary gold, nice and secure in the back. Primary stone might want to use that as part of his wall off. Although, remember the Franks, the castles for them are a big part of their strategy. Why is the game slowing down a little bit? Very, very strange, right as he loses control of the gazelle. Maybe the gazelle real, maybe the gazelle was responsible for the game glitching out there and is now trying to run amok. Or maybe MBL is just taking a sweet time, letting his villagers collect food from other sources right as this gazelle comes and finally dies. Where are his additional resources? He's got another patch of gold in the forward position. A ni another patch of gold very far back. Nice and secure. Two big forests in the rear position. So not a terrible base for MBL, to be honest. As long as he can secure his northern border, the west should take care of itself with these three itty-bitty forests. And speaking of itty-bitty teeny-weeny forests, Nikov, one, two, three as well. Also in the forward position in the bit of a cup shape. The back of his base completely exposed, but that's where all his resources are. Oh my god. Primary gold, primary stone, additional gold, all nice and safe in the back. He's also got two forests, although it looks like his second is a little bit smaller than MBL's. But it's not the size that matters. It's what you do with it and how you use this forest. 24 seconds away. Let's see. Keep an eye on these uh, this town center. But at the end of the day, but base is fairly similar. I don't think I see an advantage or disadvantage for any player. Let's see where those two villagers spawn. There they go, and they go immediately 
to start harvesting goat meat for the goat kebabs that are on the menu tonight. It looks like our Frank has discovered the forward position of our Bengali, but is now taking a standard, wary, very wide approach. Our Bengali doing the exact same thing, has scattered a bit more, has seen a bit more, has seen the primary goal to the back. I don't think our Frank has seen the primary goal of his opponent, no. So he doesn't know that it's over here, but I suspect in the next few seconds, as this scout makes his way east, he's going to see that, oh my god, this guy's got all of his resources in the back. He sees all of the resources, so MBL is going to know exactly where to put on the pressure, if pressure is what he wants to put on. And to be honest, feudal age Franks generally are the ones that put on the pressure, from my experience, with a few of those 54 HP scouts instead of the usual 45. There they are, 54 HP, because again, starting in feudal, they do get... Oh, starting in feudal, they do steal a bunch of sheep is what they do. But yeah, MBL, this is not the way you play. This is a good, good sportsmanship out of him. Does, I mean, it kind of did look like he was going to take the sheep for a second there. And I wonder if Nikov's scout wasn't there, didn't happen to be there at the right place at the right time, if MBL would have taken these goats. Because they did look like they were about to move to the right. And then the second he's noticed the opponent's scout, they kind of just stopped. So a very interesting situation there. I am very uh, curious to see, or rather to know whether MBL would have teethed those scouts. But in this universe, in this game, with these two players, he did not manage to do that as two Spearman three scouts move forward. But one defensive Spearman already here. There is a second making his way over as well. So I don't think our Frank is going to find much purchase, much, uh, much ado about nothing over here. And he's circling the back, but there's nothing in the back. And these are melee units, which means that you can wall them off or wall off against them pretty damn easily. I don't mind this base at all. This bit of a uh, sack-shaped base here for Nikov. And let's see what MBL can do. He's gone into the back. He's now seen the wall off. He knows, okay, if there's walls here, there's definitely going to be walls down here. I don't even need to scout there. And Nikov has secured his base. Uh, I mean, he's cut his base in half, basically, from the town center. He's only protecting the eastern regions the west completely open but to be honest he's not really expanding westward bit of a scuffle scout does take a little bit of damage gives as good as he gets though and our bengali is here but one spearman shoes him away the game of micro the game of counters the game of feudal age aggression begins and remember let's take a look that plus two against skirmishers there at the bottom of the list is gonna make our frank hesitate now remember, in Feudal Age, Skirmishers are generally added to zone out these units, these bad boys with the long-ass pokey sticks, who are the counter to cavalry. And in uh, by cavalry, I mean scouts. And so if you can't really get out Skirmishers, or if you're scared to get out Skirmishers because your opponent's got a, a bonus against them, I don't even see an archery range in our Frankish base, then your opponent has a one-up on you because these Spearmen are safe. Really, skirmishers are what you want in this stage of the game to shoot away. Unless uh, you're doing what these two players do, which is uh, a lot of hooting and hollering, a lot of in-your-face, you want to go, bro, you want to go, bro, but at the end of the day, 15 minutes into the game, not a single kill. Both players have run back to their bases, but our Frank, our Frank wants to know what is going on, is moving forward with basically his entire army count, just one spearman probably being left at home to guard. Yeah, he's on guard duty. This guy pulled the short straw. He is not going on any kind of adventurous campaigns. Or maybe the long straw, depending on how you look at it. As our Bengali now moves out as well. Map vision, not great for red. Map vision, not great for blue. <laughs> okay. So still in the early stages of the game, no one's really worried about relics. What they're worried about more is food count. And I'm here for it. Oh man, we're going up to fast ca fast ish castle out of these two players. So these armies not really meant to engage into one another, kind of more just seeing if they can get an opportunity, seeing if they can find some damage. I'm surprised that Nikov didn't extend the wall of just a few tiles north, and that would have just made it very awkward for Red. Instead, now Red has another avenue of attack south of this uh, forest here. Spearman engage into Spearman. Both players have had enough. Now they're going up to castle. Now is the moment we finally, are we going to get to see a kill? Yes, we are, and it will be our Bengali who kills, but also gets killed. A Spearman for a scout. Leaves the whole world blind. Look at all the little red dots across the map. No doubt looking for relics at this point. He's managed to find one, two, three, four, five. He's seen all five relics. Let's see what our Frank has seen. 
Oh, goodness. One relic. Oh, very lucky. He, so he's seen two. His opponent has seen five. And it looks like our Bengali will hit Castle Age. Wow. Four massive seconds ahead of his opponent. Armies continue to gather in the center of the map. Red. Massive, massive army presence here. Two half health units, a scout and a spearman. He is just focusing right now on map scouting, which is why his score is a lot higher right now. Despite the fact that he's only two villagers ahead, he's four army count behind. MBL wants to hit castle, wants to put on some aggression. He's finally getting forging, which is going to help both of these units. And a forward villager as well. Okay. Okay. What are you here to build? Well, let's see what our Frank is going to build with this villager. But more importantly, let's see where the two villagers pop out and where they go in 12, 9, 10, 5, 8 seconds. I don't know what the count is. Yeah, there we go. Six seconds. I could have just pivoted my eyes to the left. And there they go, heading straight for the lumber line. Never mind, they've got hammers in their hand now, so now they're going to build. And a siege workshop is the order of the day for our Frank. Frankish Siege, not exactly anything to write home about, although at this stage of the game, in uh, early Castle Age, eh, it's about as basic and uh, average as you possibly can be. You're not exactly getting Siege Onagers in, in Castle Age. So not a bad choice here, as he himself plops down two town centers. Okay, so the positioning of these town centers tells me he wants to boom economically, and he wants to be the one putting on the aggression, because these are very exposed. These are very forward position town centers, especially this one here, where... It's completely open. This one's a little bit more safe with the stone and the uh, palisade. But yeah, blue will want to keep on the aggression. But we've got elephant archers. Oh my goodness. I hope for this every time. I say this every time I see Bengalis. Man, oh man. I like the Ratha. Don't get me wrong. Pretty damn cool unit. Melee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he repairs it only to destroy it himself so his army can come out. Sees the Mangonel. Good attack round there. I say this every time I watch a Bengali game. I want to see elephants. I love elephant units. A second attack round misses. Not too sure why the Spearman is the one attacking the Mangonel. You've got uh, Scout Cavs now. Your opponent's in Light Cav, though. Okay, okay. You can start poking off, picking off rather these Spearmen. I don't think you even really need to run. Remember, they take less bonus damage, these uh, elephant uh, units. 25% less bonus damage. Oh no, MBL. MBL thought he was going to get a few villagers instead. He gets death. He gets walled in here. Viper styles. Although it looked like it was open there to the north for a second. And now these scouts, these scouts, oh my goodness. They're going to have to run by the elephants. The elephants, are they going to get him? Oh, they're so weak and slow. Oh my god. Elephants. So much fun to watch. Such a funny unit. Such an awesome unit. Not only is it aesthetically beautiful. I mean, look at that elephant unit. Tell me that's not a pretty unit. And then when it turns around, that big old gray wrinkly butt, but it is weak AF. Thankfully, it does have the HP, and now it's attacking. I don't think they come with any attack bonus against buildings, do they? Am I am I crazy here? No, to a zero attack against buildings. Very, very secluded town center being built here in the very far back position. I love this location, though. It's, I mean, a perfect location. Gold, forest, lots of room for farms. As the elephants continue attacking here, this villager heads home, but on the way home builds a house because our Frank was dangerously close to being housed there, especially since he's producing more units than he has room for. Our Bengali, 27 population space, so nowhere close to being housed. A monastery going up. He is expecting knights. Or maybe it's for the siege. But in any event, we've got now scouts. Still scouts attacking. No more military production for our Bengali. So he sees there's nothing really coming at him. He see he must see these. Uh, no, he did not see those scouts. So he didn't know that there was two scouts that are just kind of watching, seeing that he was going for the monastery play. Although, you know what they're probably for? They're probably for the relics. If he can handle these uh, light cavalry units, those relics should be his. Where, oh, where will this Mangonel go? Man, oh, man, it is a long time until that Mangonel is going to get evicted from the uh, Siege Workshop until it hits 360 HP. Blue. Just positioning, going up to Elite Skirmishers. Not a bad choice if you see your opponent is going on the Oliphant route. 
wall off continuing here to the south. Economically, our Frank is down five villagers, but he is up six army supply. And for a second there, he was housed. He was housed. MBL. What's the uh, expression when you go to a restaurant and you order too much and then you don't eat it? Your eyes are bigger than your stomach. There needs to be an Age of Empires version of that expression where you build so many units, you're training so many units, but you don't have the population space, the housing for it. Your, uh, your, what, your mouse is bigger than your, your house? I don't know. Somebody in the comments who's more clever than I am, uh, please do come up with something like that. But I, I think the expression is your eyes are bigger than your stomach, right? Which is, by the way, my... Oh, there, oh, oh those elephant asses. Oh, those elephant asses are so much fun to watch. Uh, it's a it's a frequent problem for me. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, MBL. Decides, you know what? I, I've got too many units. I'm just going to throw these guys away. What's their attack bonus, by the way, against Spearman? Still a zero. Okay. So no, uh, no Parthian tactics, obviously. Which means that they are still at a zero. And oh man, talk about taking rel. Uh, talk about taking relics. Taking relics. Where are you guys going? Where are you guys going? Okay, finally, <laughs> he does turn around. Okay, so we're going spear skirmisher against elephant light cab. And the light cab poke in. They see the barracks. They will maybe get the villager. Nope, they abscond. But they see they see the blue army. They see about a fifteen. Thousand villagers here in the center of the map and they know exactly what that means when you're playing against the Franks Who for some reason waited until he had 700 stone to build a castle even though his castle is 15% cheaper now I love by the way anyone who plays against elephant archers because they are so weak because they attack so slowly right now uh, I mean, He doesn't have pikes. He doesn't have any upgrades on them mixing in Monks Oh, 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 man. Okay, okay. Okay, red unit derping out a little bit there. Managed to get the monk. Uh, all all but one monk. Mixing in monks is fantastic. Number one, not only are the elephants range usually shit, but because they attack so weak and so slow, you can heal your units while they attack. So if you've got three or four monks like Blue did have here a second ago, I mean, he's down to one who's kind of searching for relics. Oh, that's so sour. He hasn't seen the relic right next to his base. Oh, that is very sour. Not a bad unit to have along for the ride, to be honest. And here we go. The Frankish castle attack is in full swing. This one, not exactly the greatest location of barracks in a uh, mill. So two unit, two structures that are not exactly producing much at this point. Elephant archers retreat. He's got the attack and range upgrades on them, but he's heading up to Imperial. Our Bengali off the back of three town centers, 102 villagers, 12 villagers ahead of his opponent is heading up to Imperial, but the monk, the monk, how did the monk dodge the castle fire? That was impressive, but he's not going to dodge this as he dies. It's very sour here for Nikov, who, as we saw, discovered all five relics years ahead of his opponent. Unfortunately, the relic count is identical, and it looks like the blue monk did finally find the relic right next to his base. He's got firm control of this one for now, so it's going to be three to one. And the throwing axemen are out. They're absolute terrible range, but it is such a fun unit. Definitely comes with a building attack bonus. Yeah, plus one. Oh, but not for long. It got converted. Did it get converted or deleted? What the hell happened there? I, I didn't see... Uh... He's wearing blue pantaloons, blue pants. So I think he uh, he just deleted his own unit instead of letting it get converted. And our, uh, the Frank, the Civ that I described as the OG Cavalry Civilization, is going for a mix of pike and skirmishers. Not bad when your opponent is going elephant archers, finally getting bloodlines, going up to 17 of them. Let's take a look at their stats. No, no more upgrades for him. But he will be in Imperial in 11 seconds. Our Frank nowhere close. He's building up the food count. He's also getting a fifth town center. And now here we go. We're in Imperial. We are getting Bracer. Bloodlines is almost done. So their HP jumps up to 250. But they're not elite yet. It's interesting that our Bengali is focusing on uh, attack upgrades. And there's Parthian Tactics. So now they should be able to come... Now, rather than now, they should be coming with a nice attack bonus against these pikemen. Uh, that's hilarious. Oh, my God. 
Our Bengali is using the slowest unit in the game to go for a side attack. A run by, but he's running by a bunch of outposts here. And Blue see Oh, but Blue only sees four elephants. <gasps> I mean, he must suspect that there's more, right? Okay, he's going to see them now. He's going to see them now. Nikov reveals them. Uh, I wouldn't say last minute, but pretty damn close to last minute. Skirmishers running around trying to get some kind of damage done. Red first to Imperial. We know exactly what that means. And now let's see the attack. Plus two against Spearman. Needs to get some armor upgrades on these Oliphants. Parthian tactic is gr tactics is great, but you, I mean, you've got the food. At least get at least get the first one. Elephants run into a castle. Elephants run the hell away. A lion roars in the distance and closes in on one of these elephants. Oh my god, there's like National Geographic over here. Although, as we, uh, I think it's uh, the male elephants don't, the male elephants, the male lions don't really hunt. I believe it is the women of the pride, the females who hunt. Speaking of hunting, these two, three trebs are going to absolutely hunt these castles down one by one. Our Frank has not gathered enough stone to repair. And even if he did seven villagers against three trebs, maybe against one treb, maybe against two trebs with the high ground, but against three trebs, I don't think you're repairing that castle anytime soon. Ooh, Elephant Falls. Let's take a look at the attack bonuses of the skirmishers against Archer and Cavalry Archer Armor, which is exactly what the Elephants have. That is pretty badass, and our Frank is now in Imperial, and now we're seeing Knights? Could it be? Could we be seeing Frankish Paladins against Bengali, I'm going to hope, Elite Elephant Archers? I don't know. Stay tuned to find out, or fast forward. <laughs> Actually, no, don't fast forward. That's not good. Don't fast forward. And the Frank's entire forward position, with the one exception of the outpost, is now completely in shambles. It is gone. He's got elephant archers to the north, absolutely massacring these skirmishers. You cannot have a one-to-one -one ratio if you're taking on a unit with 250 HP. I'm sorry, unless you have an attack bonus like a uh, halberdier against cavalry, you should not be taking this fight, even with the high ground. This is the uh, the same logic that I apply to conquistadors as well. When, you know, on paper, skirmishers do counter them, but on a one-to-one -one basis, nah, -uh. you need at least two to three to one. Elephant archers pushing our Frank back to the south. Elephant archers retreating tactically to the north. One random skirmisher amongst the... Uh, the wood of the trebs a third castle is now under attack our frank rebuilding or rather building a new one here he's an imperial these castles are now 25 percent off oh the elephants the elephants have been taken down and by the way forgot to point out incredibly ballsy town center out of red i mean we i thought this one was in the middle of nowhere this one is definitely in the middle of nowhere as he tries to take a few of these neutral resources why is he ungarrisoning the, uh, ungarrisoning the villager for now? Castle does go down. Elephant archers are pushing through. They are still not elite. They are fully upgraded, though, finally. But no pikes. You need pikes. You have to have that 20% faster attack. It's also not expensive. He's got the resources for it, or maybe he's saving them. Yeah, he's saving them for uh, Elite Elephant Archer. I think he's got the resources for both, actually. Pikes is not food, right? I think it costs wood. And now he's pushing in through the guts. Our Frank has an opportunity here. I mean, he's going up to 24 Cavaliers. He's now getting Iron Casting a little bit late. But the Cavaliers, remember, do come with 20% more HP. And he's, got, he's either got to get Chivalry... To make his stables. How many stables does he have? Work 40%. Uh, only four. Yeah, you definitely need chivalry if you only got four stables. And oh no, all the relics get the boot. Looks like this relic that was here got taken by our Bengali. But our Frank has an opportunity here. But he's got to get on it. He's got to get paladins. I don't know that cavaliers with 144 HP are enough to take on. Especially not with only a plus two attack. Six Pierce Armor means that these elephants are only going to do five damage to these guys, which means a lot of almost 30 volleys needed to kill one elephant. But there's so many elephants. He's going after the Trebs. 
Good move, good move. But why did you stop attacking the Trebs? There's still two of them here. Okay, he realizes his folly. He immediately turns around. He will get the Trebs. No, more Trebs. A random Rata being trained for our Bengali. Why the hell are you throwing in a Rata? Okay, Manganel a little bit confused. Moving forward, backward, forward, backward. Doesn't know what the hell to do. He's on patrol right now. And before he can get anything done, he will go. Okay. <laughs> he did jack shit the entire time. And then right before he died, took a volley and disturbed a bunch of sand in the middle of Arabia here. Villagers get caught out. Okay, you know what? I, I'm changing my position here. The Cavaliers seem to be doing quite fantastically. Although, although now they're on the low ground. No, you don't want to be fighting on the low ground. What's happening to the north? Oh, it looks like a bunch of blue villagers were slaughtered as they tried to collect some gold. More slaughter happening here as they try to collect some stone, but the real battle, the real meat and guts and glory is here in the center of the map as these elite skirmishers continue to work away on these elephants. Move them here, move them north. Why are you attacking with 25% less attack? Up the hill and round the bend, go and something, something. Uh, I don't know how to rhyme properly, but these elephants, holy moly, even down 1700 HP. They're still at 3,600 HP. What an absolute bonkers unit. There's the pike. I think he got pikes, right? There's the uh, faster attack. And let's see it. Our Frank has rebuilt some semblance of a cavalry army. 33 cavaliers are getting ready. The skirmisher is doing an amazing job. I mean, our, our Frank has built... A pretty damn good counter army. The problem for him is, I mean, look at Red. Red is already here. And he's breached the Frankish walls with a bunch of siege workshops. Out of which he's producing armored elephants. That is just an absolute crazy, crazy push here. Out of our Bengali, there is a lot of meat. But I think he's kind of stopping his own elephant there. I think I see an armored elephant here peeking Oh my god, he wants to get out so bad. There he is. There he is. But here we go, the Cavaliers. The Cavaliers are deal. Half the Cavaliers are stuck behind the skirmishers. What the hell? And yet again, our Bengali, we've seen this so many times out of Bengali players taking on cavalry. They take the high ground and the cavalry just doesn't stand a chance. Again, Cavaliers are not... Ah, oh, you need Paladins. Even with the uh, extra 20% HP, they're still at 144 instead of 140. So it's not that much more HP. You're not saving that much money by uh, getting uh, a Bloodlines replacement for free. The Skirmishers, the Skirmishers. What an absolute disaster here for our Frank, who backs away. Okay, he's got 2700 HP of Cavaliers. He's got no resources. He's got enough for one last push. I mean, I say a disaster. Looking at it now, I mean, no. Look at the HP on these elephants. Almost 6,000 HP. And now there's Light Cav, which again, come with an attack bonus against Skirmishers. But they're focusing instead on the Cavaliers. Interesting. I would, would have thought these Light Cav were 100% uh, meant for these Skirmishers. Ooh, even the Treb is joining in, trying to ball down some of these elephants. Will he get one? Yeah, it does. Fantastic, fantastic. If only this was a Warwolf Britain Treb. And the Bengali army, the Bengali army, down to only only a meager 4,700 HP. More action everywhere on the map, to the north, to the south. But again, we are firmly focused, our eyes peeled to the screen, glued to the center of the map here. 32 army supply, 247. But again, our Frank is being starved of resources with all of these side attacks. He's trying to mine gold, but the Rata... The Rata is being so annoying. And wow. Wow. Our Bengali pushes. I mean, you got to get your opponent off the high ground if he's got this unit. Now, all of a sudden, 11 attack becomes what? 14, 13, 14. And now you're taking your number one already taking less bonus damage. And number two, you're on the high ground. These skirmishers don't stand a chance. Take a look. They're missing the last attack, the last defense upgrade. Cavaliers also not ideal. Man, raiding to the back, raiding to the south, raiding to the north. 
how many villagers did our Frank have and what was the allocation? I mean, look at this. Eight villagers on gold at the end of the game. Or rather, towards the end of the game. 54 on food is good. 32 on wood is good. But eight on gold, your opponent's got 24 on gold. And you are stuck on Cavalier, which again, not exactly the optimization of the Frankish 20%. That you want the Paladin with 192 HP to the 180 of a Paladin with Bloodlines. There the 12 extra HP might actually come in handy against a unit that attacks on an 11 when you've got 6 Pierce Armor. That's basically 3 extra volleys from an Elephant once you upgrade this guy to a Paladin. Wow though, what a fun game we've seen. These Elephants just take on so much and that's why I always wonder when players play Bengalis... Why don't they go elephants a lot more? I don't get it. Elephants just such an absolute boss unit. Attack slowly. Although with pikes kind of replaces uh, thumb ring. They attack slowly. Their HP is crazy. And they move so slow and their attack is so weak. But man, what a fun unit to watch. I don't know. Maybe I'm the only one. Maybe I'm uh, rambling like a, like a crazy person here about elephants. But I love to see elephants. What I love to see also is statistics. Let's see, 99 Elephant Archers, 118 Cavaliers. We can call them Cavaliers. Majority of the game they were. Peak APM right at the end. Peak APM right at the beginning. Both players, similar similar APMs. Economies are Bengali. A little bit bigger, not crazy, about 10% larger. And does manage to mine a tiny fraction less stone than his opponent. But bang for your buck. When it comes to stone in castles, you cannot beat the Franks. More, more, more of everything. And, oh, look at that. Our Frank with four relics. Did he manage to move the relics, by the way? Yeah, he managed to move them back in the middle of the battle when they got evicted out of the monastery. Fantastic there by MBL. Let's take a look at kill count. Oh, yeah, look at that. Come on. 285 kills to 154. Almost double the amount of kills. Why? Because these units have lasting power. 7,000 HP can last a lot longer then 300 HP or whatever the hell it was here. 400, let's say. That is just incredible. That HP amount is bonkers. More villager kills as well. Looks like four times the villager kills. And with these elephants, with the fantastic, I mean, <laughs> when did we see? When's the last time we saw those slow moving elephants raiding? I mean, they didn't really raid. They wanted to raid, but then they ran straight into this castle and then backed up and then ran into a bunch of skirmishers here. But when's the last time we saw that? And this I love. Just Nikov playing these elephant units. Great. On the high ground. Refuses to move out of the high ground. Even to support his building destructive armored elephants. He will not budge from this hill until he has cleared up enough space. Has found more elevation to go on. Although it doesn't look like there's much here. The second he steps off that hill. All of a sudden the skirmisher bonus. A little bit increased. And the Cavaliers can engage without a minus 25% attack. And wow, overall, what an absolute fun game. Very fast paced out of both of these players. Nikov at the end with the Elephant Ball, the Elven Death Ball, only 29 at the left. But there were a lot more in production as we saw 99 in total. Which means that our Frank actually managed to kill 70 Elephant Archers, which is not bad. 70 Elephant Archers times their HP is like 20-something thousand. Uh, let's say 15 to 20,000 HP of elephants he managed to kill throughout the game, which is not bad at all. Unfortunately for him, the elephants parked their big old wrinkly gray butts up on this hill, refused to go down, and took so many more favorable engagements. And the economy is just so much bigger. 20 villagers ahead at the moment, 24 on gold compared to 8, and no raiding whatsoever. This Bengali economy is running full steam ahead as he guts his opponent's economy on all four corners of the map. And with that gutting, and with these chunky boys sitting on their high ground, it is Nikov, our Bengali, who takes the W, but GG to both players. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.